Hello Bruins, this is Mrs. Farouk and in this screencast we're going to talk about macroevolution. How small changes can lead to big changes and where uh, two popula uh, one population becomes separate species. And how those uh, species uh, prevent interbreeding. <coughs> and we'll talk about reproductive barriers and different trends in macroevolution, punctuate equilibrium versus gradualism, and conversion evolution and versus um, diversion evolution. Now, just reviewing, we spoke about uh, microevolution, small changes, and our unit of evolution is a population. If you remember, a population is a group of individuals with of the same species living in the same area that can interbreed and reproduce viable and fertile offspring. Now when you're defining species, um, sometimes looks can be deceiving. Here we have spiders. Uh, do you think this is the same species? But if you look closely, they do interbreed and even though they come in many colors, they are the same species. Then the question comes, how can we classify things that uh, asexually reproduce like bacteria. Now here are two birds that look very similar but yet they are two different species. They have two different songs and in birds they have mating calls um, and each bird has its own song so they don't interbreed and thus they are called, uh, they are regarded as two species. Now here you ha uh, are these the same species or not? Uh, you, in fact, they are the same species, but they're different in uh, sexes. So one is a female, and one is a male. The smaller one is a male, and the big, the large uh, ant is a female. So as you remember from last class, we spoke of these changes caused by one mutations, where a mutation uh, if the genotype results in a new phenotype. Um, that can affect survival. Gene flow are individuals moving in or out of a population and sexual reproduction, meiosis and random fertilization contributing to that variation in a population. So mechanisms for our gene frequency in a population to evolve and that could be gene flow, genetic drift, remember a random event that uh, reduces variation and does cause large changes, natural selection, or even sexual selection, uh, where different species might have different courting uh, rituals, or they can be mating at different times, and then of course mutations. So these small changes can lead to uh, big changes, and that's what we call speciation. So speciation is um, is a common ancestor, but the, you have these branches coming off uh, because of these changes, they no longer interbreed with one another and thus leads to reproductive isolation. So here's a scenario that we think how speciation can occur. Uh, you have first of all isolation and then populations diverge and they can diverge because they're isolated and no interbreeding occurs and then they become so different that when they are when they do come together they don't interbreed. So here you have geographic isolation let's say for example um, these group of fruit flies uh, lay their eggs on these uh, bananas and these bananas float away from the mainland to another island and on that island now those fruit flies are separated from the mainland they uh, court have offspring together they have different sources of food compared to the mainland and over generations uh, they have different selective pressures from that environment on that island and then when they do meet again uh, with the fruit flies on the mainland they don't uh, interbreed and if they do interbreed and they produce unviable infertile eggs uh, thus you can say that they have evolved into separate species. Now uh, De Vries who worked with plants uh, says that the origin of species 
and the responsible uh, factor is macro mutations or mutations you can have especially if something goes wrong in meiosis so he studied uh, like polyploidy in uh, plants now how does speciation occur uh, again reviewing population becomes separated they change over time because they're in different environments or they have different selected pressures or different traits are uh, selected for uh, eventually they no longer interbreed and uh, between those two different groups and over time results in two new species uh, so this can also occur if, if you look at the bottom picture here even if they're in the same location but um, there could be because of competition they might be uh, uh, using maybe different food sources or are dividing uh, different ecological niches and over time then they don't interbreed anymore. So reproductive barriers lead to speciation and what do we mean by reproductive barriers? Uh, means they're obstacles that prevent them from mating or fertilizing if mating does occur. So here for example you have geographic isolation so physically they cannot meet or ecological isolation due to competition they have different niches so here for example a lizard can occupy say the canopy of the forest and another uh, group uh, occupies the, the forest underfloor or they'd be having different mating times temporal isolation or behavioral isolation uh, recognizing different courtship rituals or songs or calls like frogs make and or mechanical isolation physically uh, they cannot mate or gametic isolation where the sperm is prevented from fertilizing that egg so geographic isolation uh, here's an example in the Grand Canyon uh, where they are separated physically and this is uh, another term that we use is allopatric speciation because they're physically separated over time um, they um, evolve differently and when they do come together they don't interbreed uh, examples of geographic isolations are if you look at common ancestors on different continents we see very similar animals yet because they have been separated um, they evolve differently another example is uh, these uh, fish called the blue-headed wrasse uh, they're divided by landmass the Isthmus of Panama and, and after separation uh, again evolve separately and when they do meet they do not no longer interbreed temporal isolation a good example of that is in birds or frogs where they'll meet at different times and that could be due to migration or a group of birds that do migrate or don't migrate and the timing of their mating season is different so they don't mate an uh, example here is robins who usually migrate to the south to warmer climates and then some are not migrating so uh, the ones that don't migrate could um, then no longer interbreed with the ones that do migrate and behavioral isolation so uh, in some animals the females are choosing their mates based on a physical characteristic or a uh, courtship ritual or mating call. So a good example here is a blue-footed booby bird in the Galapagos Islands uh, where it chooses its mate based on physical characteristics and courtship rituals. So if you get a chance to look at the animation or video clip. So how fast is evolution occurring? And there are basically two big ideas. One idea is what Darwin would probably say is gradualism that organism gradually change and so those changes uh, that organism looks very different from its, uh, com com its ancestor from the past where in punctuated equilibrium uh, we look at the history and we say that there's big changes that leads to the present 
uh, organism. So, and then there'll be uh, periods of time when there is no change. So, gradualism again considered old theory uh, that organisms have these slow changes and they're continuous because environment uh, change therefore it has an effect on uh, living organism. Uh, the problem again is that uh, sometimes you don't have fossil record because there's gaps um, in the fossil records, especially with invertebrates. And then there are fossils, what we call index fossils, that are used to um, as a point of reference to guide the, the age of the rocks. So gradualism, again, slow changes and you can compare the present organism to its ancestor. So it's like one continuous branch. Punctuated equilibrium was uh, proposed by Stephen Gould. He was a professor at Harvard. And he said that if you look at the fossil record, um, those changes have occurred really fast compared uh, to its time. And then you see uh, long periods of time when there is no change. So he came up with this idea of punctuated equilibrium. So here's uh, different ways you can represent graphically gradualism versus punctuated equilibrium. So here you can see punctuated equilibrium is a continuous change and here you have punctuated equilibrium where you have bursts of change and then no change and then bursts of change over time. Now other patterns of evolution we can compare is something called convergent evolution. So here if you remember uh, convergent evolution have different ancestors but they look the same. Uh, we can look at what we call analogous structures, uh, structures that have the same function but different uh, structures. So here for example you have ancestral, the birds have ancestral bird ancestry. The bat has mammal ancestor and the uh, pterodactyl has a reptile. Now all of these can fly because they uh, have those same environmental pressures, uh, but they come from uh, different ancestors. And another classic example is a dolphin whose ancestor is a mammal, shark, um, a fish. Again, uh, similar structure because of the same environment but d uh, different ancestors. Now divergent evolution is the opposite where they will exhibit homologous structure meaning similar structure but different function and they're adaptive radiation meaning they adapt to the different environment. So if you have marsupials again you have different branches depending on their environment. And then you can look at examples of coevolution, uh, different species that have close ecological t interactions. And these interactions are again caused uh, by the environment. So here you have herbivory, where, um, like, example, like ants will protect a plant and the plant will provide it, uh, it with a place to live and nutrition. A uh, hummingbird, again, is a pollinator for these um, flowers, and the flowers provide nectar. So the shape of the flower allows that hummingbird to feed on it. And then here you have bees and orchids, how these uh, orchid, here is a shape of a, a female um, uh, bee, so the flies can get attracted. Uh, thinking that they are copulating with a female when indeed they're what they're doing is pollinating. Uh, so come with questions. Thank you for watching and we will discuss further about the definition of species in class.